Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman, and over there we got Christopher Dredd. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you guys a heads up. Uh, we're going unsponsored for this video. Yeah, this is an unsanctioned video. Anything goes. It's also PG, but uncensored. I'm going to say some things you may not want to hear. I was going to say PG and uncensored kind of contradict each other, but whatever. Okay. Go over to YouTube. Give us a subscribe. Click the bell to get notified. Like us on Facebook. Give us a follow. Please continue to watch our videos. We greatly appreciate the support. And I believe that's my cue, right? Yep. Wait, did I just cue myself? <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, shots on goal were 38-35 uh, for Florida. Uh, the Predators won 64% of their faceoffs. Uh, Florida won 36. Florida was two for four on the power play. And, well, of course, the Predators 0 for 2 on the power Let play. me correct you, 0 for 1. Remember, they had the 5 on 3, so technically it was only 1. Well, either way, they were 0 for on the power play. Uh, penalty minutes were 8 for the Preds, 4 for the Panthers. Uh, Nashville shot or out hit Florida 10 9. Uh, Florida had 14 blocks. Predators had 12. And the giveaways were 12 11 for Nashville. First period, uh, Florida outshot Nashville 17 to 10. Second period, Nashville outshot them 15 13. And in the third period, Nashville outshot them 10 to 8. Yeah. All right, Dan, do your thing, man. All right, scoring in the first period, Carter Vernhagen with his eighth, with an assist from Barkov, his 15th, and Ekblad, his sixth, at the 629 mark. At the 901 mark, Mason Marshman, Marshit, uh, with an assist from Ekblad, Marshman's first, Ekblad's seventh assist. Then we got Jonathan Huberdo, Huberdo's ninth of the year, with an assist from former Nashville Predator, former Milwaukee Admiral Patrick Hornquist. Then the only guy who seems to do anything right on this team, Matias Echo, with his yeah. fourth, with an assist from Arvidsson, his seventh, and Yossi is twelve. That was at the twelve twenty-three of the second. Then Aaron Ekblad scored his seventh with an assist from Barkov, his 16th, and Huberto, his seventh. Um, then Forsberg got his 10th with an assist from Arvidsson, his eighth, and Ekholm, his fifth. Ekholm's third multi-point game since coming back. All right. The last goal of the night is the highlight of the night just because I'm happy to see it. All right. So hear me when I say this, because he's the only guy I'm not going to rip right now, because the monkey's off the back now. Let's see what you can do. All right. So Aaron Eckblad scored his eighth with an assist from Barkov and Yandel on the power play at the 9.07 mark. Um, in the third, that Colton Sisson scored his fourth with an assist from Richardson, his second, and Forsberg, his 11th. Then Ryan Johansson with his first of the year with an assist from Arvidsson, his ninth, and Forsberg, his twelfth. The Jofa line strikes. Finally. Yeah. All right. Johansson, Sissons, Forsberg, Ekholm. Arvidsson and Yossi. Yeah, what about dead air? That's all that should be safe at the trade deadline. Yeah. But then again, there were two goals that got, uh, uh, yeah, they got waved off. One was waved off, and then one got taken off by a stupid slashing penalty. All right. 
Let's talk about that stupid slashing penalty. Furman he South. slashed at the air and nowhere near hitting anybody. And yeah, the Predators get penalized for it. It was a dumb. Yes, so. Roman Yossi slashing on Radko Gudis. He's probably going to get suspended a game for it. He didn't do anything. Walk. I was going to say, he didn't hit anybody. Well, you see, because I'm going to say this right now, it just came across Brett Pesh from Carolina fined $5,000 by player safety from Carolina, the second player in two days. Okay, how does that affect what we're talking about? You're trying to say Roman Yossi's going to get penalized for slashing at air? Worse than they am. The, he'll get hit with a $5,000 fine and a minimum one game suspension. Yeah, that negated one of the goals that we should have had. And then. um, That would have been Arby's. Yeah, and then Grimaldi had a goal waved off because I guess it was offsides. But Grimaldi did actually get a goal. It should have been 6 5 us for the victory, but no. All right. So your referees with Ward, Dwyer, and Furman South. I'm starting to hate that Furman character. Sucks. It should have been 6 5 Preds. Instead, they lose 5 4. I mean. All right. Uh, Libor uh, Suchnik and uh, Travis Tume. Are the linesmen head coach for Florida is Joel Quinville, head coach for Nashville for the time being is John Hines. Um, head coach for Florida, Kevin, or sorry, scratches for Florida, Kevin Kanatman and Riley Stick, Stillman. Um, scratch for Nashville. Anybody care to guess who's not playing again? Uh, Yakov Churn. Correct, Amundo. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I saw that earlier today, and so it really... What's the point of Yakov trying to even being on the damn roster if they ain't going to play him? He's You're good. On. They need to play him. He's good. They want to um, apparently lose every game. So they're, pl- so they're playing for ping pong balls, but they want to be competitive. So... <sighs> I'm sorry, people. I'm getting frustrated with this team, just like all you fans. It, it, and you can't blame me for my frustration because you're probably just as irritated by the stupidity of this team as I am. Yeah, I said I'm not team irritated. I'm, I'm beyond the angry stage and irritated stage. I'm at the I'm disappointed stage, which is a little bit worse. Oof. You're at the, uh, what's that word? Um, when you don't care, you're at the, uh, eh, whatever. I was thinking of some smart word. Uh, okay, how about I put it this way? You know the guy from Major you're, League? You're, ap- you're apathetic towards this team. That's the word I was looking for, apathy. Okay, so you know the guy from uh, uh, Major League that's always like, Oh, here we go again. It's going to suck. And I, yeah, that's me right now. What, from Major League? Yeah. He's a comedian. Bob he, Euchre? No, Euchre's a... Euchre is just, just like that Major League. You're talking about that dude from Angels in the outfielder, the guy that played Ranch Wilder. Him. He was the one that was always crapping on the team. Like, oh, no, here it goes No, again. he made fun of Wild Thing. Oh, the, the tubby fat guy in the, uh, the bleachers, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I know who you're talking about. That's how I feel towards this team this year. Because you guys sat there and got everything we wanted, pretty much, except for Taylor Hall. Thank yeah, you now Buffalo might... And now Buffalo might as well just shop him. He's actually talking about signing an extension. Why? Eichel wants to leave that team. Who would want to play with Buffalo when you get when you have Eichel that wants to leave? But that's 
But Big fish, small pond. Buffalo is not that large of a market. I'm guessing that's what it is. Uh, big fish, large or big fish, small pond. Pretty much. Although anyway. uh, Nashville could use Taylor Hall or Eichel or Rasmus Dahlin or Ristolainen. Yeah, yeah. I Just, think at this point, and I hate agreeing with certain things. He hates agreeing with me, people. But, all right. We cannot wait. Look, y'all, they said two weeks ago that the next week was going to be crucial. Now this week's going to be crucial. We cannot keep doing this going into the deadline. Because that's going to make me have a severe heart attack. So basically what you're saying is they should crap or get off the pot? Pretty much. Either shut up and play good or rebuild. Yeah. Embrace one of those ways. Yeah, so crap or get off the pot. You you can't you can't just sit there all day, dude. You gotta do something. All right. Speaking of at least, get, at least get rid of your coach. You have a perfectly good assistant coach and Carl Taylor that would that I think would now would be a good opportunity to give Coach Taylor a shot at coaching the big leagues. We know he's capable of doing good things here in the age. So I would I would a hundred percent support Carl Taylor as head coach. How about you, Dan? You think Coach Taylor could do it in the big leagues? I hate to say this, but no. Huh? Not with you don't think team. you don't think he has Not with uh, this team. Hey, you never know. What if that's the shot in the arm that they need? Would he at least be a good interim coach just to get him through the year? I think at this point, if you're going to go that route and you're going to bring in somebody from inside the system, um, as dumb as it may sound, because I have this gut feeling this is the way it will go, Todd Richards, Scott Ford, and then Carl Taylor, that is the order it goes on this list. There's a reason Carl Taylor isn't always talked about as far as an NHL coach, and that is because he never played there. Okay, okay. So it's not that he's not capable. It's that he don't have the player experience. What, did Scott Ford ever play in the big leagues? Two seasons, not many games, but he did play. Okay, okay, that does count. He also Wait, who, do you, who do you play for? Nashville and St. Louis. Oh. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with our career. And him and Poyle are buddy buddy. So and we know how Poyle feels about hiring his buddies. Hello, hi. Uh oh, Poyle, maybe you gotta go bye bye too. Here's the thing. Oh. I know that Nashville has no plans in firing the GM. Unfortunately. We cannot ignore the elephant in the room anymore. All right. Hines? No. The elephant, the elephant in the room is a poil. Yeah, that is. Because here's the thing. Over all the years that Nashville's been drafting, they can find a stud defenseman out of the seventh round, get a star goalie in the eighth round the last year they have it. But you can't get a goal scorer to score over 40 goals. We are the only team in the entire league with a history scoring goals guy where leads the team record in franchise goals scored per season at 39. I, oh, damn. I was about to say, well, if I hit 40, yeesh. even Arizona has a 40 goal score. They have seven. Ow. Um, Ow. Um. How? How is that possible? Keith Kachuk. Okay. Mm. Uh, quizzing you. You're the one that threw out a definitive number. I thought maybe you had like more than just him to rattle off. Well, they had Keith Kachuk. Then you had uh, Shane Down. Okay. You have 
Uh, Wojciech Wolski had two years where he scored 40 plus. But the point is, Predators. And Jeremy yet to... Roenick. Ah. Uh, yeah, but the point I was making, that's pretty sad if you have a pathetic franchise like that that has at least a couple of 40 goal scorers. They haven't even sniffed the Stanley Cup. The Stanley Cup was actually in Nashville. Yeah, it's it's getting the Stanley the Cup, Cup never took a trip to Arizona. Look, and I doubt it ever will. Yeah, right. At the rate that franchise is going, yeesh. Have you been reading the stories about that franchise? Yikes. Yeah, you guys check the hockey feed. Let well, not well, not hockey feed. Their uh, their editorials and articles suck. Well, just pay attention to wherever you get your hockey news. If they start talking about Arizona Coyotes, I'd recommend you uh, read into it. Just type in Arizona Coyotes relocate 2021 and you will get like 30 feeds. Yeah. And about 28 of them will be good. Yeah. <laughs> There's it's, bound to be a few crappy resources, but you know. What I'm but saying. it's 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 getting to the point for hockey fans. And, 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 and I'm saying this not just about the, the Preds because Flames fans are feeling this. Um, Vancouver's feeling it. Buffalo's feeling it. Um, the Rangers are feeling it. Oh, yeah, the Rangers are definitely feeling it because they had number, oh, number one overall pick. And they haven't done squat. It's to the point now where, look, you have to change this somehow. Yeah, you got to change the, the culture in the room in Nashville. for Nashville. Isn't coaching because I'm sorry, you can't coach scoring. No. You can make plays where scoring can be more effective, but you cannot coach the pure ability to score the score. Yeah. And Nashville has not had a pure score since Alexander Radulov, and they let him walk over. So that, that comes down to the GM. And, and it came down to signing him or taking three first-round draft picks and a crap ton of money from the Flyers for Shea Weber. Yeah. But nope, you had to match it just to keep Shea uh, Weber there, hoping you can keep Suter there, and how well that work out for you there, Mr. Poyle. Yeah, let's see here. We ended up with PK and Suter ended up in Minnesota. Where's PK? He is currently in New Jersey. Correct. Where's Fisher? Retired. Where is anybody who had any relevance on this team uh, during the Stanley Cup run? Where's Fiala? Uh, Where's uh, Avert? Minnesota. Where's Aberg? Where's Freddie Goudreau? Overseas, uh, Goudreau, he dropped off the face of the planet. He's on the taxi squad with Pittsburgh, but okay. Well, I, like I said, dropped off the face of the planet because I lost track of playing. Where's Where's Freddie? Where's Freddie? He kept bouncing around. He couldn't find a consistent gig. And Aberg, I thought he was going to be good, but he ended up going overseas because he just couldn't catch on. My biggest issue is you sat here and told us it'll be better with Duchesne. Terrace oh. will fix our problems. Oh. Um, that Terrace deal, that probably eliminates that Philip Forsberg squash because Gerard's a good defenseman now and that second round pick they turned into a first round pick. Oh wait, Samuel Gerard, where's a predator? Yeah. Really? Wow, because he's second actually he's actually playing really good for Colorado. Holy crap! Yeah, 
they traded him to Colorado, and Colorado traded a couple things to Ottawa, and in the end, Nashville ended up with Turris. That's all we got out of that. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, Poyle is the problem because uh, he's not good at making decisions. Look, there are certain times where you look at a trade and go, I shouldn't, but I really need to. Well, Nashville go, last year was looking stupid for letting Fifi go to Minnesota or Fiala. Now look at Fiala. He's doing okay still in Minnesota. The the real question, I guess, for for us as Nashville fans is this. All right? Coyle, for the love of God, if you don't trade at the deadline and we get an early pick, and you pick a defenseman. I'm just gonna have to walk, dude. I I cannot do the play defensive hockey and then still give up five goals. That's not defensive hockey. No, uh, that's uh, pathetic hockey. That's what that is. And I'm sorry. Here's the thing. Yossi's not a captain. These guys should be coming out energized, and if they're not, he should be yelling at them. I never see it. I don't even see it on the ice. He doesn't. I don't, mean, I don't even see the coach showing any emotion whatsoever. This team in the beginning of the games, dude, I could play. The zombies from Walking Dead could play better hockey. Yeah, yeah, I've seen them zombies move pretty quick. <laughs> Look, you cannot show up halfway through the second and play really hard in the third unless we're going to start playing games backwards from the third to the first. Yeah, we might go undefeated if we did that. <laughs> right? But like I said, they should have won tonight. We can't help that the referees screwed them. The referees right. blatantly and screwed Nashville them on the two goals. For those of you who are not traditional hockey fans or the casual fan who does not pay attention to what's going around in the rest of the league, the Florida Panthers do not suck anymore. anymore. Yeah, they are good. And the Predators are no longer good. They are bad. Look, if, hey, if I'm you, not going to sugarcoat it, this is not a good hockey team we're talking about, Dan. I, I can't sugarcoat it. it they're not I, a good and, hockey team. And here's team. the question. I don't know if it's the team. I don't know if it's the coach. I don't know if it's – we. I, I, I'm not in that locker room, so I have no clue. I can't because yeah, we should I be, see we, on the ice. Yeah, we should be sweeping the Blackhawks, sweeping the Red Wings, and we're not. Well, we are 2-0 and all against the Blackhawks. But we have how many games to go? Six? Yeah, I don't think we're going to sweep them. We're probably not going to sweep the Red Wings. No, Ooh. we already lost against them once. Yeah, so we're, we're not playing good hockey. This is not a good team. Here's the thing. And I'm a, I'm a, this is the final touch. I'm going to put on this, and then we're going to be done for the night. Yeah, we've been chatting for a while about this one. And this is a real one, and I'm talking straight down to the ones who always put it on the goalies. Okay? When your defenseman, and I'm talking to you, Dante Fabro, in particular, goes, and it's two-on-one, and he plays the pass. So he's playing the guy who doesn't have the puck, and the guy who does have the puck makes a move, and then roofs it on your goalie. That is not your goalie's fault. He should have played the puck and then had to make the guy pass it around him. He didn't do either. That is standard hockey 101 as a defenseman. You are taught that early on. Always play the puck. 
You can't. And here's the thing. Then, not only that, you always keep your eye on it. What the hell are you doing turning your back to the puck all the time? They go to shoot the puck and you're like, scared to crawled up in the fetal position. Maybe, dude, you're just maybe not tough enough to play in this league. Well, Fabra? Yeah. Well, that's what you get when you don't let them play in the minor leagues. And that falls on management again. See, it all, it all comes down to management. And, and here's the real thing. You, you cannot – if they fire Hines and still suck, that's not – you're not going to fix this problem this year. This one's deep in there now. Yeah, you're going to have to – I really hope they don't make the playoffs because I'm not looking forward to covering the Predators getting swept in the first round. I'm not looking forward to it if they get swept in the first round. Um, I don't see them making it. I don't see Dallas making it. They just lost again tonight. Yeah. Like, it, it would take a miracle for the Predators to get their fourth spot. And if they do get to the fourth spot, they're going to get swept by the Lightning. Unless a miracle happens. But, yeah. But COVID. Sure. <laughs> COVID, COVID's been a thorn in everybody's side. But this is not a COVID issue with the Predators. This is just a bad hockey. This is not a good team. It's not. Stay loyal to the team. Don't turn your back on them, but this is not a good team. The, here's the thing. The, the the difference in this is, okay, and and I've never said this officially on camera, so I'm going to Now you're about to. Go for it. All right. Hoyle, what respect do you think your young players are going to have for you when you sit there in the early part of the season, and I'm speaking as a person who – who, well, I get lied to quite a bit in my life. So yeah. I'm going to say this. How would you feel if we told you, Poyle, you could get to keep your job? And then fire you about an hour later. And then fire you the minute, like 20 minutes before the NHL draft. <laughs> Dude, that would suck. Yeah, how would you feel about that though? Like you, you, you're you're going into the draft. Oh, we're going towards a youth movement. We're in the process of rebuilding, and then you sign every top free agent you could to keep this team competitive. Did you not remember league champs? There's enough talent here. Or did you forget what got you to the cup? Hey, we're hey, just keep this in mind, Poyle. Uh, it's your people that are gonna help the Wolves go far to call the cup playoffs this year. There are none. Oh, well, whatever. They'll win the central title. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it should have been Milwaukee, but that's a different topic. But yeah. We're talking about these guys. Mr. Got a Shaw off New Jersey. But I will say this. Look, your track record, it's not horrid. It's really but it not. Ain't gr- it ain't great either. You're like middle of the road, if anything. And that's actually, nice actually he's, only, he's a third all-time win <sighs> for a GM in NHL history. Yeah, and that Stanley Cup run probably bought him a couple of years, but that was a couple of years ago. Look, <laughs> I'm going to say this. I understand loyalty. I understand business. And I understand how hockey works. One of the difference is you cannot hire your friends in business. <laughs> You know, you can go into business with your friends, but you can't own a business and then hire them and then treat them like they're below you. 
because that will kill your friendship, okay? Now, with that being said, Heinz was your friend. <laughs> and he sabotaged your team. No, and you gave him crap and told you to, and basically said, make me a chicken salad. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're going to have to come up with a new analogy, but we get it. Look, all, all he basically did. He told him, he gave him crap and said, make me a chicken sandwich or chicken salad. Sorry, chicken salad. And all we ended up was uh, King Caesar crap. Look, it's not that hard to admit a rebuild. Look, the Buffalo Sabres, Ottawa Senators, New Jersey Devils, all of them admitted it, went along with it. The Blackhawks even did it. They LA Kings. It. LA Kings. And what happened for them? They won two cups in, what, three years? After their rebuild. Yeah. But I'm just saying, they rebuilt and they uh, reached the promised land. I mean, even look at the New York Rangers of the early 2010s. They rebuilt in uh, in the late 2000s and into the early 2010s. By 2013, they were back in the cup. Yeah, now they're rebuilding again. But most of those guys, by the time they got there, either wanted way too much money or, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Look, I understand the that fine, the, the cap sucks. The, the NHL cap really sucks because the players are going to – they're seeing these baseball players and NBA players getting paid so much more for less physical demanding. Yeah, but baseball, no salary cap. NBA, their salary cap is higher than the NHL, and their TV rights deal is way higher than the NHL, which is why the NHL can't afford to pay their players because they keep getting crappy TV deals. And it doesn't help that when an oh, they it screwed the fans out of being able to put money into the team's pockets and the league's pockets because weren't they supposed to raise the uh, salary cap? But because of COVID, that put a stop to it. Correct. However, um, by the time... Or at least according to the CBA, it was supposed to increase, but now the salary cap's frozen. According to this, after they get back to normal, the salary cap's supposed to jump to $100 million. And that'll give players their much-needed... Uh, their much-needed uh, pay raise. Because, dude, no way it's $100 million. My ass, they ain't gonna have a higher they ain't gonna have a higher salary cap than the NBA NFL. The NBA's no salary cap is 125. No, it ain't. Are you sure? This year. What have you been smoking? I didn't even realize your salary cap was that damn high. And the NFL's is not much like 115 around that. Wait, am I that out of touch with their uh, salary situation? Wait, you only know this because of the damn video game. Maybe I should start playing video games more. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, sad I, when you're that's sad, NHL, when your video games teaching uh, people like Dan here more about your league than some of the GMs that you currently have. Not only that, but I can tell you this. Out of all the players you guys let go, Colin Blackwell is actually thriving pretty well. That was a mistake. Yeah. But oh, we could replace him with Eric Holla. What's he done? Nothing. Cousins, what has he done? Nothing. I thought Holla was going to be okay, but no, nah, he's done garbage. Look, I'm not saying these players don't deserve to be in the NHL because. Most of them do. But. Some of them are just system players. If Maybe they just don't work well on Heinz's system. And I'd say thing, start with Heinz. Start with getting rid of him. And if that don't work, get rid of the GM. I Unfortunately, think the point, coach is be, always the first to go. Let's put it this way. If they have to fire Heinz, let's see. That's Trot. Love you lot. Hines, I'll be three. Yeah, three strikes, you're out. 
Yeah. Ain't that usually how it goes with GMs? Yeah. Three coaches, whole bunch of players that you shouldn't have lost. You did. Wait, who Last actually hey, who actually owns the Preds? Because didn't you say uh, Poyo owns a piece of the team? No, he's just the president. Oh, okay. Wow, so it would be a complete cleaning house. Oh, boy. Well, you could <laughs> kick him up that ladder and still, like, fire him from his GM spot. Yeah. You could release him as the GM and kick him up the ladder, but that's going to be pulling teeth. Because then he still gets the privilege of hiring the new GM. Yeah, no, nah, you can't do that. You can't do that. He'll just promote Heinz the GM. Not what? funny. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be. Well, it was kind of supposed to be funny, but. Look, yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. You guys have been, over the last couple of years, all about giving us what we want as fans. And as media, you try to give us what we want. All right, cool. We want to do Shane. You gave it to us. It sucked. Try to. Yeah, don't listen to the fans necessarily. They don't always know what is right for the team. It's yeah. true, though, because uh, have you heard the stuff that Predator fans say? Do you really think they'd be good GMs? <laughs> Look, I'm going to say this. Look, Saros is a very competent goalie. Is he a starter? No, but uh, he is a very good, solid goalie. He's a good backup. It's always good. But now, I, Ingram, this, I don't know if, if you Ingram's are any rebuilding. Better. If you are rebuilding, he is a serviceable starter to get you at least 20 wins. At least. But, all righty. I'm being cued to wrap this up because somebody's jonesing for some nicotine. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, this is stressful and it makes me want to smoke. Man, so, we've been doing this video for practically an hour. We're way longer than we were expected. But check out our YouTube page. Subscribe over there. If you like what we said, if you all want to see more of this, just wait till the next Preds loss. It should probably be Saturday. Later, guys. Really?